issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you know, I've got a, I've got a photo of uh, Wes Hayden Island. Not Wes Hayden Island, really. Hayden Island. Most of us are somewhat familiar with Jansen Beach. Remember Jansen Beach, Safeway, that, that just just yep. prior to it's getting off the going going into Washington, if you will, on the on the I five, if you will. We we're very frequent in that particular area. Or back in the old days when they had all of the activities on there with the <laughs> Olympic side swimming pool, the Ferris wheel and this, that and the other. Well guess what folks? We've got over two thousand people that are living there. I mean residential folks. We got some business down there and then this, that and the other. And um and so anyway, there's some issues here that are facing the island here and and like typically about anything else around the area nowadays, we're very political. Everything is all political. But uh, the neighbors, the neighbors in that community, and also the business community, people in that community, have issues in terms of the direction, if you will, that the city of Portland, through the mayor, the our incumbent mayor, is sort of taking us. Well, to get a better understanding of that, I've got three guests here that's going to open up our eyes, if you will, and also share with the public at large as to why they should also be interested and uh, the direction, if you will, in the future of, uh, of Jansen Beach and our Hayden Island, if you will. And so we're going to get into this, and hopefully you will get a better feeling as to why you should be supporting, if you will, uh, some of the concerns and issues of the community uh, that, are, that are here present with us today. So anyway, we've got three people here. And to my far left on your screen, I've got Tim, Tim Heltzer. Okay, there's Tim right there. Save West Hayden Island. If you, you'll, you'll see his logo sitting up there. He'll give you a better feel of what that's all about. We've got Herman Cashel. The cash. I the, want cash. the cash. He's talking cash. about the cash. <laughs> but that's what we're talking about. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. And, and then we've got Victor Vitz. Vitz from uh, High Noon. And uh, again, there was an organization they will get into basically defining who the, what these what these organizations are all about. Because I'm the sort of the layperson. That's why that's what makes me very effective. If I don't know something, I'm going to share it with you by basically asking these guys the question. Because in all due respect, whenever you're looking at a lot of these talk shows and whatever, it's as if people are talking to themselves. You know, we got to get you involved because it's very very important to uh, the livability, if you will, in the Portland metro area. The the issues that we're talking about here is Portland. And, and how are you going to be represented? And how, you know, what, what, what does it mean to you? How does, does it define it to you, you? Whatever. So let's go with that. We're going to start off probably with, with Herman, and Herman will kind of okay. give us a little overview of uh, what is the issue uh, specifically. And then the other guys are going to come in and kind of give you some, i.e., some up to date issues and et cetera, et cetera. And so at the end of the day, you're going to have a better feel. And at the same time, at the end of the day, uh, we're going to want you to give your, your representation a call. To let them know how you feel, okay, Herman. Okay. Go on. Well, Hayden Island, like you mentioned, is between Portland and Vancouver, in the Columbia River, and um, the process right now is they're trying to do an annexation and industrial development plan for West Hayden Island, which is and West Hayden Island is defined as west of the railroad. Hey, that Tom, put do this one. The, one, one, one that cuts through the island. Herman is speaking. Then you do that one and, more time. I'll point to it. This kind of this process started back in the 80s with uh, Portland General Electric when they owned West Hayden Island. They designed an industrial park with a couple different scenarios, and got permitting, and were kind of ready to go. And then the economy took a downturn, so they scrapped the whole idea. And then the land was sold to the Port of Portland, and they tried in the 99 and 2000 time frame. They tried to put together a uh, truck loop. Uh, with mm -hmm. grain and so and a bridge to go over to Marine Drive and then that was rejected and then some time had went by and now we're in the process in the last four years we've been in a process to try and do a rail loop on West Hayden Island that would access by rail would bring product in and ship product out either from uh, up the Columbia River be shipping out to the Orient, or the other way, it may be coming in and being distributed through the Northwest and down into California. And that's where we're at right now. And our mayor, Sam Adams, is uh, very intent on getting this process through. He wants this thing done before he's out of office on the 31st of December. And we can, we'll expand on that through our other two guests here tonight, or this afternoon. 
and uh, that's about all I right now. That's about all I can tell you about it. Is uh, that process is kind of ongoing. He wants to wrap it up as quickly as possible. Okay. And uh, okay, Vic, how did how did we get? What about these organizational committees, if you will, that were set up, if you will, initially to, to address this issue? Can you give us a little history of that? Yeah. Well, let's let's look at what the the proposal actually is. The port of Portland wants to take 300 acres mm -hmm. of the West Hayden Island property and use it for a big marine terminal so they can bring deep water ships right up to the shoreline there and load product. And there's 800 and, and acres probably, right? There's 300 of the 800 acres? Well, uh, yeah. I'm let sorry, let, no, let no. me actually, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I short circuited yeah. myself okay. a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Go on. Um, I've been serving on citizens advisory groups for this project for four years. Okay. The first two years, the city asked a group of, of uh, hand-picked local people uh, that was pretty representative to try to come up with some way to develop a, a port facility on West Hayden Island that would also protect that would protect the natural resources that are on West Hayden Island, and that would provide recreation opportunities for the community. That group came to a, uh, a, a standstill. There was no way we could make a decision as to how we should slice up the baby mm -hmm. on, on West Hayden Island. So they selected another committee. And for the last two years, that, that's called the advisory committee. And for the last two years, we've been working on an assignment that we got from the city council. They said evaluate a project that would take no more than 300 acres for a marine terminal and leave the rest of 500 acres mm -hmm. um, as natural uh, open space uh, dedicated to uh, uh, preservation of some of the natural resources that are out there. So we've been, we've been studying this sort of predetermined package for two years and have found that, um, well, at least <laughs> from my perspective, um, we still haven't got a, a, a way to do this um, that uh, meets the city's new city plan of uh, projects that consider the community residents, the citizens of, the, of, of Portland, um, instead of the infrastructure, and that focus on human health and equity of, uh, uh, amongst the, the, uh, the, the community that has to uh, absorb this project. So right now, uh, we're down to the last few, few meetings of this project. There have been two years of constant activity. Now we start with we, the project has gone to the Planning Commission, to the Planning and Sustainability Commission, mm -hmm. excuse me, and uh, they held their first meeting uh, last week on Thursday evening mm -hmm. and um, found out that there were so many people who wanted to testify that they had to extend to another meeting that's coming up on the 27th mm -hmm. um, and and that's really where we are the the city once the planning commission makes up their mind about what they want to recommend on this project then it's going to go to the city council well right now planning commission is going to be still handling it at least until the 27th mm -hmm. and maybe longer than that and then it goes to the city council. Well, we're in December, and the mayor wants this thing resolved by the end of December, and I just don't see how they can hold any kind of reasonable public hearings with uh, all of the other activities that people have to go through at the end of the year, including all the other things that the mayor wants to get resolved mm -hmm. by the end of the year, mm -hmm. and give this a fair shot. Okay. Say West Hayden Island, okay, and again, Tim, you're bringing in on this deal, and like I said, then we'll have a discussion. If there's yeah. anything that we're missing, anything, you can just, people can just jump in, because the whole idea is to educate the viewers, okay. 
So he was hating out. Let's say you're flying in or out of Portland and you're flying over this area. It's um, equally divided uh, by the railroad bridge, the north-south uh, railroad bridge. Uh, the east part is almost completely developed. Mm -hmm. uh, shopping center, uh, all kinds of different housing uh, arrangements, uh, lots of shops, uh, some industrial sites, some uh, commercial uh, operations. On the west side, from that railroad bridge west, clear out to the end of the island, um, almost completely undeveloped. There are some mm -hmm. high power uh, lines that run across there, but for the most part it's really totally undeveloped. Mm -hmm. And uh, a great part of it uh, is uh, uh, a floodplain, uh, forest, um, uh, some wetlands that are federally protected, um, uh, shallow water uh, for uh, juvenile fish, uh, on that west side, 81 species of birds, hmm. nine species of mammals, four species of reptile, uh, nine species of moths and uh, butterflies and things like that, and uh, a, a, a rich array of marine life, uh, much of which is on the federally protected list. So what you have is half of the island already developed, half of the island undeveloped. The Port of Portland says, gee, this is a great spot from a, an industrial development perspective. It has deep water uh, shipping potential, 43 feet channel. Uh, they have to clear that out a bit, but uh, it's a potential. They also have uh, the north-south uh, uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe uh, Railroad line. They also have barge accessibility, bringing down grain and whatever, and they also have uh, truck traffic uh, easily accessible to I-5 north and south. So if you're an industrial development person, you cannot find a better place to put a new uh, marine terminal and industrial park. If you're an environmentalist, you see this same 800 acres as an absolutely prime urban natural resource habitat. So there's the conflict. There are the developers who say we've got to have this in order for the regional economy to grow. You have environmental folks saying this is the centerpiece of a 150 mile ecosystem, all of which is connected and if you disturb even 300 acres, you're really wrecking the whole place. And it is, if you pave it over, you'll never see it again. No, so that's the issue. And that other piece in regards to West Marine, that, that area, if you will, is right across from the terminal, the existing terminal of the port. So yes, if you, uh, if, you fish, yeah, if you fish that area, you would you'd actually see mm -hmm. the port just on the other mm -hmm. side. Yes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, I, and I, as I think about recollection, I can remember at one point in time, they were thinking about the possibility of developing, if you will, or expanding the port mm -hmm. based on the idea of more traffic, if you will, mm -hmm. more traffic uh, from the, the ships and digging the, the, you know, i.e. dredging it a bit better sure. and whatever. Sure. But then at the same time, and I want you to talk to that piece, at yeah. the same time, they were talking about uh, from the worldwide building in order to access more business in this area. It's almost like coming down a canal <laughs> from the ocean. <laughs> you got to come down a canal. But you have to have, uh, be able to accommodate bigger ships mm -hmm. or larger ships. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you got to drag it deeper and wider, if you yeah. will. And then at the same time, we got Washington uh, just north of us, and they're sitting right on the ocean, if you will, and they're going to be able to accommodate more. So bottom line, is, it, is that really the future for the business of, the, of something like this? I'm well, just throwing something out. Uh, just, just, just. Well, yeah, let Victor me, has a lot to okay. say. Yeah, let me, let me just, just add that, um, yeah, the, the channel got deepened, right? Um, and there, the ships that used to not be able to get up here can get up here now. But there's a new generation of very large ships that mm -hmm. are being built because the Panama Canal is opening up a new canal mm -hmm. that can handle much larger ships. And that is going to cause 
significant economic waves <laughs> amongst the shipping industry. And we have no assurance that our little uh, port at the end of the 100-mile-long right. canal, right. uh, we, we don't know how it's going to fare in that economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the actuality is the, the projects that are proposed right now by the port for this marine terminal, none of them involve any Portland products. None. None. The, <laughs> well, so what the are, what they're are they're bringing in, they're bringing in bulk products. They're bringing uh, uh, agricultural products, grain, soybeans, whatever it might be, from the Western U.S. Literally from the Western U.S. Um, and storing it on site, and then loading it on the ships and sending it off. Mm -hmm. So somebody at that end makes money, and somebody at the other end gets the product, and they make money. We're the middleman in the middle, and we add no value whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Similarly, they're bringing uh, bulk minerals from Canada and, and other parts of the western U.S., but not coal. The, the port has said no coal. But they're bringing those bulk products to the site. Same thing. They store it in a in a bin until they get enough accumulated. They load it on a ship and they right. send it on. The guys at each end make the money. We do absolutely nothing. The third one is perhaps an auto terminal. Now this one we get a little value out of because the autos come over from the Far East, mm -hmm. and they they load them onto trains and ship them. In, anywhere in the in the in the U.S. Right. really, but the, a few of them go to local dealers, because so, mm -hmm. here particularly on the West Coast. So yeah, so the dealers get their cars delivered, but that's it. No other hmm. no other connection to the community, and and yet they're asking us to sacrifice this 800 acre parcel. Mm -hmm. Let me put this quite a, a little bit different <laughs> yeah, way. Sure, yeah. All of the benefits from a development like this go to the producer, who's hundreds and thousands of miles away, and the consumer, hundreds and thousands of miles away. All of the costs, environmental, construction, so forth, are here. So the benefits are on either end. The costs are in the middle. We happen to be in the middle. We're paying the costs, they're reaping the benefits. Let me talk just very briefly about why this is such a contentious space. Number one, the committees have had commissioned numerous studies to find out what's the economics of this proposal that the port is bringing to the city. The port wants the city to annex this into the city of Portland and then change the zoning so that it will be not no longer uh, farm forest zoned, but it will be industrial zoned. Uh, it commissioned uh, studies on the environment. What is the impact of the, on the environment? What is the impact on the human health? What is the impact on traffic? All of these studies have been commissioned People, along with Victor, have studied these for years and they have all found that it's not very likely that this thing is going to make money so that there's no real revenue that you can put in your pocket, that it's going to be highly destructive of the environment and will have to be compensated for or mitigated in a number of different places. It's going to be seriously challenging to the health of the people living nearby uh, it, and the traffic is going to just be choked beyond any kind of accessibility. So these studies that have been done by independent folks from around the Northwest and are experts in their field have delivered report after report after report and you can just go down and check it off. No, hmm. that's not going to work. No, that's not going to work. No, that's not going to work. Why the mayor? and the port continue moving forward when all of the evidence says this is not a good idea and there are hundreds and hundreds of people coming out to every meeting saying this is really a bad mm -hmm. idea 
and they're s significantly well informed with the facts, the process just keeps moving. When you say the people and whatever, can we talk about what are some of the associations and organizations sure. that are, are the pro, is, uh, anybody on the, the pro expert. side? Well, I'm co-chair of the Hayden Island Livability Project, and we've okay. been involved for, well, we've been around for about three years now. And what is that, what is that livability project? What, 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 what well, it's, it, it started out as a, a grassroots thing, and it, and it was an offshoot from the That's environmental right. justice mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. committee that CRC had. Mm -hmm. And they disbanded that, and then we... A kind of a loose group of us got together and we started out with the Save Our Safeway campaign and, we, mm -hmm. and that kind of started things and we've moved you know, along to different things as they came up. We're, in, we're there when, they, yes. when that original uh, committee that Victor was on couldn't come to a decision on industrial development on West Hayden Island and we're at the first uh, city council meeting or the city council meeting when they took a vote on setting up this process and they and uh, Adams had penned this deal with the port and would do 500 natural 300 industrial and uh, we were saying no at the time mm -hmm. <laughs> you know two and a half years ago mm -hmm. we said no and we still say no today and but we you know work we try to do as much as we can to get involved and try to get as much public opinion and we had a lot of people down on Thursday at the Portland building and most of those people were you know, no on this. The tribal uh, Native Americans were there, the Yakima Nation, uh, Nez Perce were represented, the, uh, um, uh, anyway, they, several tribes were represented mm -hmm. there, gave testimony against this. It's going to be a violation of their 1855 treaty with the federal government on salmon, the rights to salmon, which is in perpetuity forever, and uh, which has been upheld several times by the Supreme Court. And uh, you know, and they, they, I'm sure they're going to sue. You know, if this goes, would, this annexation process goes through, and the industrial thing comes up, and and the other thing to look at too, this is they they're talking about in 2025 to 2035, is when this actual development would take place. And uh, of course, you don't know for sure. Maybe they'll jam something through mm -hmm. faster if they can get it annexed. But what about the health issue thing? Right? The Herman, I know well, that, you, live, you live in a mobile home park, right, and there's about 1,200 yeah. 1, or so folks. Yeah. The majority of which are seniors living on limited income. Um, right. And the cost, if you will, for and leasing got, those spots. And we've are got some heavy. young children too there. Yeah, besides yeah, that, you yeah. know, talk a little bit about that health deal. I mean, I, well, the health analysis, we were able to get them to at least do a, a very rudimentary health analysis. Okay. It's not a health impact assessment, which is a more formal, more comprehensive process. It takes probably a year of, of analysis and research to come up with what the facts are out on the island. This was a, the health analysis that they did is took pieces of these reports they'd uh, contracted out and had done by other companies and looked at that and kind of put that together, did a a sound study, noise study on the island over on the manufacturer home community, did a, um, um, glean some other information about uh, the health impact or health, but we still don't have a baseline of where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to be an important thing to have. And they haven't even come close to that. Our, our person, my wife and I, Dr. Uh, Leslie Cody, she's going to give testimony on the 27th. She tried to on the 15th, but she couldn't get there in time. But she's read through the final draft or the, of the health analysis and just can't believe how, I mean, it's generic, mm -hmm. not specific to the to our situation out there. It doesn't really tell tell you anything mm -hmm. about what, mm -hmm. what the situation would be. Well, it, it does tell us some things. Well, it, yeah, it, it, it tells tell us we're, we're going to have a, an increase uh, in air yeah. pollution from the terminal, <laughs> that the air toxics... This newly developed terminal. The, the newly yes. de proposed terminal. Proposed, yes, the yes. air toxics uh, in our community are going to increase um, by about 300%. Mm -hmm. two, excuse me, 200, 300%. Yeah. Um, yes, 300. 300%. Uh, they don't know exactly what that means, but they know that there will be negative effects on the the local population they they know that they just can't tell you how many cases mm -hmm. of of uh, cardiovascular or or, or uh, lung or uh, yes, problems or uh, even even increases in cancer N no no actual facts but yes there will be all of these things 
Hmm. Well, it, it, it's okay. always been said that you know, people could care less about the four to seven percent, you know, the, the low income folks and whatever. That's not an issue. It's always after the fact. <laughs> yeah. we'll take care well, of it. Sorry about that. It, it's, I had to throw that on the table. We would yeah. like to get into the 47 yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the health uh, impact uh, study didn't get into as many details as we'd like because they weren't funded adequately by the mm -hmm. city and they weren't given enough time by the city, there are some studies that have shown the consequences of placing large industrial sites near large populations and probably the best one that's the most comparable to what's happening on West Hayden Island and the manufactured home community less than a half a mile away is the study uh, in a similar situation in uh, Oakland, California where they put a large rail yard next to a fairly large population and they studied it over time and they found that the incidence of lung cancer shot up significantly for the simple reason that the air became almost unbreathable because of the diesel particulates uh, in the air. So what we have are, are ocean-going ships that are coming in to West Aden Island. They are idling their engines. Uh, they're burning uh, uh, fuel that pumps out uh, uh, particulates. We have uh, two, uh, 200 more trucks a day rolling across Hayden Island in and out of the terminal to carry goods. Uh, we have an additional 2,000 cars a day that are expected and we have trains uh, in this circumferential uh, rail loop in this 300 acres that are running uh, their engines. So what we have are all four of these advantages to the port for why this is a great spot and they're all belching all of these uh, toxic materials in our direction. Well tell me something Tim in regards to that again West Hayden Island right that's on yes. the, that's the western end of the yes. whole situation. Okay fine if they were allow, allowed to, if you will to develop that particular site you're talking about the trucks and this and the traffic and whatever mm -hmm. are they going to build another bridge uh, from that end going back to the port? Or, it's a major debate uh, and he's uh, really the expert uh, and, on and, that. And if, yeah. and if not if you're going to go through this we got the CRC issue are they looking at building another would, the more road would you speak to the talk, CRC a minute? Yeah. Because I think that <laughs> yeah. really has that a major impact. Talk about well, that. well, let me go back just a little bit. Okay, no er, problem. Earlier you talked about, you know, from this site, right. you can see Terminal 6. Yes. The big, the big port right. terminal, right? Right? There, right? And actually, if you look across the river, you can see Port of Vancouver over there, yes. too. But in the original proposals, it, like back in the 90s, they proposed to build a bridge yeah. mm -hmm. so that the truck traffic could communicate with the other terminal activities that go all the way around the corner and up the Willamette. Well, this time around they decided they didn't need the bridge, that they couldn't justify it based on economic need. So what they've done is they've, they have proposed taking the, the main street that goes through the center of the island the oh, existing, no, traffic now on the east, now. east and north. They're proposing <laughs> to come under the railroad track and bring all of their traffic along a city street, which they want to convert into a designated freight street and rebuild it to handle trucks, big trucks. And they want to bring it over and try to get it onto I-5 hmm. at the Hayden Island Interchange. Well, the CRC has not Columbia River Crossing. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. The, the Columbia River Crossing has been, as you know, working for a long time trying to build a new bridge. Right, exactly. And that, and that would build a new interchange million on there. our <laughs> island. They've spent $160 million yes. of study, and they no still have not designed the Hayden Island interchange. Wow. So we have this uncertain I-5 project and this new freight route right. that's trying to get over there right. and neither one of them wants to do the expensive parts of the two blocks that where all of the traffic has to merge the traffic going to the mall to our, our new our new <coughs> mall that's just had a fifty million dollar upgrade um, it so we're at an impasse now in terms of 
traffic. Well, tell me this. We're, we're, I, I, but why aren't you all allowing the mayor to be a part of these discussions? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the problem? You, Nick, I, that I'm, I don't that understand that. What, what's the problem? I, I mean, I can see the solution, but you've not um, involved the mayor in this over process. The summer, what's the problem? Over the summer, we had a major Mayor Adams, community, too, by the way. Yeah, major uh, yeah. community meeting yes. in the, the Oxford Suites Hotel. And the mayor was there, and he took over the meeting, and he became the facilitator of this meeting. So we had flip charts and pens, and people were writing feverishly, uh, capturing the statements that uh, many of the residents were making, and he was taking the mic from person to person to person. So we covered that wall with issues and concerns around the Columbia River crossing, the new bridge uh, across mm -hmm. the Columbia, as well as uh, uh, West Hayden Island development that the port wants, as 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 well as the uh, Lottery Row, all of the uh, yeah, online uh, mm -hmm. uh, gambling that's happening there, uh, and all of the problems that that attracts. Uh, so we, it, it was quite a, a couple of hours uh, worth a very interesting meeting. He said, I'm taking all this information and I'm going to respond back to you. Well, about 10 days ago, he responded back particularly around the West Hayden Island plan, and he said, here's about 33 million bucks. Uh, from who? I mean, who from, is this from? The, from the city coffers. Here's about 33 million bucks. From the people's coffers, bucks. right? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> money from My you money. and me. My money, yeah. And, and what we're going to do Taxes. is we're going to build some trails for you out on West Hayden Island, <laughs> which we don't want. We're going to take, we're going to take about six million of this, and we're going to make some parks over on the east part of the island we're going to throw a lot of money at fixing some of the environmental issues around trees and critters and so forth and we're going to do a number of other things we're going to give some money each year to the the uh, residents so that they can uh, maybe improve their uh, the homes that they live in so that they don't have to breathe this air or hmm. feel the vibrations so and and so the mayor has basically inserted himself in this process, but he's told us what we're going to have. The only problem is it doesn't match mm -hmm. what it is that we said were our concerns. Mm -hmm. He decided what our concerns were and how he was going to use our money to pay for them. It has really taken this whole process off the track, and we're very concerned that it's going to go into the ditch and uh, pollute everything. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to hold that note. I think we might go to the time to maybe take off a short note. We'll get a short break, if you will. Is that okay, Dave? We'll take a short break, and we'll come back. And I want to throw something else on the table. I want these high-priced jobs that, that, that the mayor has identified, yeah. these high-priced jobs. And, uh -huh. and I might indicate just briefly before we take this quick break that it's kind of interesting, you know, from what I understand about development, uh, first you find the anchor tenants, <laughs> then you develop. In this particular case, there, it's my understanding the Port Bill Wyatt has said, well, gee whiz, we don't, we don't even have a prospective tenants That's to even true. possibly yeah. even afford the, <laughs> and the, afford port, the, and the Port of Vancouver has a rail loop that all it needs to be done is hooked up to the main line. Right. And that's they don't right have now. any tenants for that. Well, I tell you that's what, on that, let's yeah. have a discussion on that. We'll take a short <laughs> break and we'll be right back, okay? Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
<laughs> You're right. Okay, folks, we're back. Okay, well, again, we're talking about an issue of community. Uh, we are part of the part of the community here in the Portland metropolitan area, and we've got some major concern with, uh, in all due respect, with an incumbent mayor, Sam Adam, who's on his way out, if you will, folks. And we just don't understand why is it he's taking this big push, if you will, to annex. A, annex uh, the neighborhood and make it, if you will, in an industrial plant, some of which you don't even have the money. As I indicated right before we, bro we, we broke, if you will, we, we, we took a break, a short break, if you will, we were talking about the whole issue of, um, of Hayden Island with the gentlemen that are here with me. We're trying to educate you about what the issues are and what the concerns are. And it's a very important piece, very serious issue, because in all due respect, here we got a person that's trying to push this thing through right before he gets, he gets out of here. He gets out of here January 1. You know, it's not April 1. It's not April Fool's Day. No, this is real. This is real stuff. And uh, he's really gotten folks to the point where, you know, it's, it's, uh, well, I don't want to get pointed at But the other point, let's get back in this issue, but I might make another point, too, about uh, our, our very prosperous uh, mayor, a very supportive mayor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now he's moving. He's moving, uh, he's moving from North Portland. He was living up in that area, in, in the St. John's area. Maybe he's Kenton. trying to... Kenton, yeah, Kenton yeah. area, and I think those fumes are going to be going over there. So he's getting out. Yep. Is that right? Where is he yep. moving to? Well, in southeast Portland, oh, the southeast well, Portland, away from that piece yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's safe. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Anyway, but let, let's get down to these jobs thing, as I was mentioned before. Now, let's talk about that piece. Now, the big point about, and let's expand on that between the port and the mayor's office, and and we haven't talked about the governor's office yet. And the, now we got a new chair. <laughs> House Chair Tina Kotek, our mm -hmm. representative for the area. Mm -hmm. I want to know where she's at on this, this this issue, and it's very important piece. So let's talk about this job thing. I mean, we, we talked about this mm -hmm. the, the development piece. Remember that? Talk about that. Let's talk about these jobs. High paying jobs, right? Supposedly. High high paying family wage jobs. Right, jobs. That's that's the that's the sole argument. The catch I, word. I you know. I talked about all of the. Products that right, you're going right, to go through right, this port right, that right. don't have any connection right, to, with that. to the community. So where are the businesses? What businesses? But what specific it, businesses it, are going to identify with the job? It takes longshoremen. What? It takes longshoremen right. to operate these facilities. We know that right. Mm -hmm. Now the the trend in longshore employment is down, mm -hmm. and for this facility, I think the longshoremen is is going to be a smaller component of the workforce because handling bulk materials allows you to automate a whole lot of stuff. So there aren't going to be as many jobs as they, I think, are predicting. But they're predicting over a thousand uh, on-site jobs. A thousand? A thousand. That's a lot of folks. That's, that's a pretty big crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and then those folks, of course, will spend money in town, and that money will support other business, other jobs that will grow. Multiplier effect. That's, that's, right, right, that's, right, 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 right. that's the theory behind this. But you have to have a business to identify with a job. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean where are the businesses? And it's been stated here in the paper, right? In the, in the, right? There are no businesses that are going to be using this facility. So what, what we're It's only, as I understand it, 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 it's only union labor that's going to be. Only union labor? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's, that's my understanding. Was it AFL CIO? I think is supporting this project. One of the unions with, with the business community. I noticed it was noted that that between the business community, the Portland Business Club, or whatever group, mm -hmm. was supporting. Well, there's this. the Portland Business Alliance. Alliance. They were supporting they're, this. They're right? they're very supportive. Uh, uh, but what's just uh, so confusing to us is the fact that they're making these statements, Portland Business Alliance and others when in fact there are no businesses there once this thing is constructed and that will take some construction people <coughs> right, several right, years right, right. To, to make uh, there will be very few jobs that we can identify uh, there will be people who will drive cars from ship down a ramp uh, onto a loading area those cars will then be put mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. uh, rail cars and shipped around the country so you have these people Right, driving right, right. cars off ships. You have automated diesel uh, locomotives right. that are going to be right. moving these trains mm -hmm. around. The, it's going to be operated by a joy, uh, with a joystick from right. a couple of miles away over mm -hmm. a television monitor. Um, that we don't see any 
uh, major increase in jobs. And yet the really sad part of this, and I used to be a, a union member um, many years ago, so I understand how that works and how important unions are, those jobs simply aren't there and yet the promise of jobs has been sold over and over again by the port and by the city as benefiting this region economically. But what about Bill there, Wyatt? Is he sitting at the table? To, uh, did, did anyone address that issue and ask him specifically what, where the business is going to be coming up here, creating these jobs? Uh, uh, Eco Northwest, which is a highly respected uh, economics and uh, environment uh, consulting group, made a study and they said based on some very vague promises by the port, here is what we're estimating. But for the last 10 years, the port has been looking for prospective customers to come in, say, we'd like to use this property. Port says, okay, we'll build this out build for this you suit, yeah. according to your needs, mm -hmm. and then you pay us, and right. we'll take right. it from there. Uh, they can't find anybody who's going to sign up. Uh, and Wyatt has been very clear about the fact, the standpoint, of, for their investment, they're not going to be able to get their returns. <laughs> Yeah. Let me bring state? up another yeah, point that's very concerning, sure. and then I think Herman has some important things to say. Number one, we don't know how this thing is going to get financed, but if the port goes out to the public to sell bonds, construction bonds, to make this thing happen, that depends on revenue that this project will generate that can be used to pay back those bonds. If this project fails, the city is on the hook to pay off those bonds. So let's say that 20 years down the road this thing never materializes and it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. This thing is probably not going to be feasible or sustainable and yet a lot of money is going to get spent on making this happen. The city will be on the hook for probably the neighborhood of 200 million Wow, wow, wow. Where are we well, going to find that money? Last point. <laughs> last point. <laughs> right a check. It's state yeah. law yeah. that whenever you annex a piece of property into a city limit, that city is responsible for building the infrastructure, uh, making sure roads, bridges, gas, water, electricity, sidewalks, all that sewage, all that's provided for by that municipality. If the port gets its way and the city council annexes uh, this property into mm -hmm. the city limits mm -hmm. for the purpose of industrial development, the city is then on the hook, required, expected by law, state law, to build out the infrastructure mm -hmm. to support that development. Where are we going to get that money? Wow. Well, even that, uh, let, let me ask, throw some mess out on the table. Sure. Port of Portland. Okay. Port of Portland. Yes. What is it? Is, this, is it a private entity? <laughs> <laughs> and if, if so, uh, I take it uh, they're investors in that deal, and that's a legitimate piece. But if it's a public entity, uh, who's the boss? It's a state chartered, a state chartered, chartered organization. Mm -hmm. The board, ex uh, the executive director, is appointed by the governor. By the governor well, of this state? Yes, and, uh, as well as are sure. all of the commissioners on that uh, port by the governor, board. The, the sitting governor. And, and, uh, and affirmed or approved by the state. Uh, legislature. So you have government involved, but you don't have any accountability by the port to any elected officials. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, they also collect taxes. If you look on your property tax mm -hmm. bill that just came out last a few weeks ago, you'll see Port of Portland, and there is some money coming out of your pocket to go into the port's pocket to use. Is that throughout the state of Oregon? Way. Everybody gets that, that tax? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm that just I'm thinking. not sure either. I know that's another good know, point. Certainly, by the, the tri-county area is. But we are taxed. But, I think by but we are taxed. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see and there, this one. And there are other yeah. there are other ports in the state that are not that we're not run that way. They have elected boards. Mm -hmm. Port of Vancouver is that way. It's an mm -hmm. elected board mm -hmm. by the people, so mm -hmm. people have more direct access mm -hmm. to that board. So the governor's at the do. table too at this point in time, right? Yeah. Now we've got well, a newly elected <laughs> chair of the house in Tina Kotek, right? And she's a newly now where is she and she's and and this, well, this is, is her, her district. This is her district. Yes. So where is she at the table? Has she responded to the issues? She is not at all responsive to mm -hmm. any issues on Hayden Island. What, what she mean, avoids Tim? 
any issue that we bring to her. We've been bringing to her the issue of the lottery on Hayden Island for the last two years, and she continues to say, well, it's really the city's issue. It's not something that the state legislature can be involved in, and yet the state legislature regulates the, uh, the lottery commission and the uh, uh, liquor Yeah, but what about her constituency, the people who put her in there? We're very unhappy that she is so unresponsive whenever we bring these issues. Well, you know, I, I, might, I might admit, in all yep. due respect, you know, you know, I, she's not responding to the show either. I, mean, I happen to live on the, I live there too. Yeah. In ways She'll be even life. less responsive now that she has this leadership position in the House no, no, she of will Representatives. Be. We will, yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she has been, um, in the past, very responsive relative to the, the bridge, the uh, uh, Columbia River Crossing. It involves a lot of state because, money and yeah. federal money. Right, because, right, right. And now she's very involved in that because she's got to lead the effort this year to come up with the $450 million out of the state legislature to make that project happen. So, so one of the things that's happened with, with Tina as our local representative right. is her responsibilities have escalated significantly where she's now the, the leader of the of the House and she has the the statewide responsibility to push some of these issues through and she just does not have the time really to deal with well i mean it's oh, and come it's, on now. And what it's, about my vote i mean <laughs> primarily she's got she to focus i know you're what gonna about these seniors down you got a lot of senior citizens that are down here they're living on a limited you're gonna income have to go talk it's to insulting her. no we're going to talk to her talk because to we got a serious issue here we got the majority of the folks who live on this island are seniors living in the limited income and too often they're sort of like thrown under the bus. Yep. And in this situation here, that was part and parcel of the campaign. I remember that seniors voted for her because she was going to react to the issues that were related to this island. And that bothers me. Well, we have a, a major chunk of the population on Hayden Island living uh, less than a half a mile from exactly. the, the West yep. Hayden Island industrial development. Many of those people are on fixed incomes. Many have health issues. Many are handicapped to the point that they can't move around very well. So when this mayor comes forward and says, we're going to uh, fix up your home so that you don't have to deal with the vibration and the mm -hmm. light and the mm -hmm. fumes and so forth, it actually makes these uh, mobile home communities prison camps because people mm -hmm. can't go outside yeah, right. and walk yeah, their I, dog yeah. or take yeah. a walk or breathe the air because it's so toxic. So now you're going to insulate the room, you're going to insulate the house with yes, windows. Yes. But they're going to be <laughs> the gotta, prisoners. You can't come out the house. Just so. We need to add in the uh, there's floating homes too. That's right. Yeah. Even closer. Yes, ma'am. You know. <laughs> so you want know, and. So that's another issue too. It, they it seem like the floating homes a lot of times get you know left by the wayside here, but that's an important thing too because they're very close to this situation they're very in the close, water. Yeah. Well, in fact, the chairman was Ron Smith of High Noon, who yeah. was chairman of the High Noon situation, and made mention to me about the fact Bruce has done deal that type of deal. He's frustrated too yeah. along that particular line. You know, so another point. Well, yeah. Tina is in a, a key uh, place to make some uh, serious. Uh, seriously supportive uh, moves uh, in our direction. She's done nothing. Would you all be willing to have her come we and, and talk delighted. to her sure. yeah, prior to delighted. this other meeting? This is a, this is a very serious issue. That's why we're doing it at this right. point in time, okay? Mm -hmm. Give a call. Make her a statement. Can you make her a statement? You, would you all like her I'd to be? I'd be delighted if she would come and, and address some of the issues that we have been struggling with for the last decade okay. and with little or no involvement by the state. Well, Representative Kotech, you've heard it right here from the, <laughs> right here from uh, Oregon Voters Digest. Uh, uh, I will be giving you a call tomorrow, which is Monday, <laughs> and, uh, and I will leave you the message and hopefully you will get back to me and give a, come up with a schedule of some sort that you contacted some of these individuals that are sitting here or you can contact me. And in all due respect, I'll be more glad to have the camera crew there just to show how positive and enthusiastic you are in <laughs> taking the lead on this particular issue because it is a problem. It's it a problem is huge. It for, is. The, for the state for that matter too for that matter. We have CRC involved in this process. Yep. We got the lottery situation. I mean we're we're yeah. the whipping whipping what a whipping board yeah. whatever in, yeah. in the, for yeah. the whole state right yeah. now. We yeah. got problems yeah. here. We have the bridge. We have the bridge. Which is That's a right. huge issue mm -hmm. and and uh, Victor has been working on that night and day and once uh, they say this is the way it's going to be 
and then two months later they change it and don't right. tell, any, and, and tell us about it. Mm -hmm. We have certainly the West Hayden Island uh, possibility. We have the lottery issues that right. are that are uh, creating major problems for us. Uh, our housing values, mm -hmm. our Good housing now. values yes. have gone down mm -hmm. close to 50% in wow. the last five years. Wow. And the, the uh, multiple listing service will, has it all documented. Hayden Island, the property values have gone down uh, approximately 50% in the last And one of our, you know, there's two banks on the island, a U.S. Bank and uh, Wells Fargo, and U.S. Bank has went to a three-day week now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and because of the drop days. in, yeah. in uh, and the, and the customers. The economic studies that have been done for the Marine Terminal Project have said that, um, this will reduce the value of homes on the island. Mm -hmm. And they've also said that it will create a, instead of a residential sense to the island, it will create the risk that the island will be perceived more as an industrially oriented mm -hmm. uh, place. And that will chase away investors who we're depending on to come to the island and build the facilities that we've incorporated into our new island plan that the city council approved just like two years ago. Yes, the so, Hayden Island plan, something that all of us have worked right. on, uh, was a uh, uh, local resident overlay that kind of spells out the really fine details of uh, zoning and uh, other regulations. Uh, where streets are going to be and so forth and we basically said we would like more services here on the island but in order f to attract those services we need to increase the number of people who live mm -hmm. here so we're looking to add more people that means people are going to have to build some structures to accommodate these people and if it's seen as a uh, depressing uh, kind of uh, area then builders are not going to build here. People are not going to be able to move here. We're not going to get the kind of services that we need. And if you take a look alone at the the Jansen Beach Mall, they tore down ma basically the main portion of the mall and ha are rebuilding it piece by piece with a $50 million investment. Has the mayor said to the, the, the mm -hmm. people who are dumping all this money into the economy, thank you very much, we're delighted, no, what he's done is he's saying, we want to build uh, this facility over in West Hayden Island and introduce 200 more diesel trucks a day and 2,000 more cars a day that'll be running right through the middle of the mall that hasn't planned the streets to accommodate this kind of increase in traffic. So the, the mall owners and managers are very upset about how far the mayor has taken this development on West Hainan without consulting them. Wow. It's very distracting. Like, yep. Can I get back to sure, the job no. thing? Because yes. they're always yep, talking yep. job, job, jobs. Uh, we got a neighbor a few doors down. He's a longshoreman. And I was asking him about, you know, how his job is. Well, he he ties up ships here on for the in the port of Portland. And he goes across the bridge and he ties up ships in the van, in port of Vancouver. And he gets paid, paid by Jones Stevedoring. And to the job, it doesn't really matter where the job's at. You know, they well they covet these Portland Port of Portland jobs mm -hmm. here. Doesn't matter. I mean, there's longshoremen they could go over there, go here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. We got about sixty thousand cars a day across the Interstate I five bridge that work here in the Portland metro area. There's about ten to twelve thousand people that work in Vancouver that live in Portland. I mean, the the benefit of the wonderful I five new I five CRC project. Is going to benefit Vancouver. It doesn't really benefit mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But the jobs thing is just such a ridiculous thing. I mean, the jobs could be either side, doesn't matter. And they've played it hard, particularly in this down economy. Look at all these jobs that are going to be created. How could you possibly be against this development? Yeah. It is just baloney. And these, these are things that are, you know, this West Hayden Island thing is, is supposed to be off in the 2025, 2035 time frame. But the mayor, but the mayor has said in a, I think in the Oregonian article, 
uh, just recently that within five years we're going to start seeing jobs. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, you know, I'm going to tell you something. We, we're getting right to the We've got about four or five minutes. Wrap left. it up. And I'm just a lay person. Uh, I happen to live on the island myself. I'm a <laughs> senior. Got a business I'm a there. senior. Yeah. I've got a business, small business yeah, yeah. person, whatever. And by the way, the mayor never stopped by and said hi or whatever. He's to missing some great food. Oh, yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> Besides that, I, I voted for him. And, in fact, supported him when he ran the last time around, helped him win, by the way, and got Whoa. hit for it for doing that. Whoa. But the bottom line is that, uh, folks, as I see this thing, I see this as an eviction of the seniors. Yeah. I saw this yeah. as like an eviction notice of some sort. Like Pretty they're much. trying to get rid of the population and see a high-rise yeah. uh, situation come in on the island. You just yeah. evict everybody, and more the high than, rollers come in there and just yeah. pick up the deal and just put more marinas than, and all kinds. More than 50% of the island is 60 and older. That's right. That's More right. than 50% of the island is 60 and older. Wow. You know, and I, and I think about, I would think that Tina would be somewhat sensitive to that issue because she, in her own right, she's being noted now from a, from a national perspective, she would be the first openly gay person who chairs, if you will, the House mm -hmm. uh, in, in these United States. And well, big, yeah. uh, I've yep. been supportive of minorities. I mean, I think seniors are falling in the same rank. You would think that she would be sensitive to some of the issues that are for seniors. You know what I'm saying? We have a, well, she has a very high senior problem. We have we're, a fundraiser we're minorities night now, on Monday we're, night. We're moving into <laughs> yeah. the, We have a fundraiser on Monday night yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, Herman can talk about that raises money for the uh, uh, Pride Coalition. Yeah. So, uh, Pride, which is? Pride? No. Uh, our, tomorrow night at Oxford Suites, we've got a, a fundraiser and a celebration party mainly for the Hayden Island Livability Project, but also for OPAL, which is a uh, nonprofit that has organized people, activate leaders. Uh, our attorney, Jonathan Oster, runs, runs that, and he's a law professor at uh, Willamette University. Um, but we're trying to, we, the fundraiser is mainly to help uh, help with their CRC lawsuit on environmental justice issues. Well, let me read a question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Uh, and uh, those environment, because they basically ignored all the. Okay, look like we're at the end. We're all at the right. end of the story. Gentlemen, look, this is a very serious situation. This is about, this is it here now. We're closing up right now, but look like we're going to have to come back and visit this situation yes. again, okay? You've been very generous. Yeah, maybe, we can get, yeah. maybe we can get Tina here to talk about that it. That might be good. Yeah. Tina, yeah. you heard oh, the word. Yeah. Or maybe we can get the mayor. Maybe the mayor. Here. Sam, yes. come on over here before January 1, okay? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is Explain real. what you're trying to do here. It's, exactly. And if, it's yes. after, if it's after January 1, Charlie, come on over. There you go. Well, and if Folks. Charlie wants to come while the other mayor is still here, he can come too. He'll be mayor now. He'll be a little bit more so. Yeah. Now for sure. <laughs> Folks, have a good evening. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Have a good one. We'll see you after, after the holidays. Take care.